Thank you, Speaker. I'm honoured to rise in the House today and speak on behalf of all families, especially mothers, on Bill 33, Maternal Mental Health Day Act 2022. As many in this House will remember, in the previous parliamentary session, I introduced Bill 176, the Maternal Mental Health Day Act 2021, which was unfortunately voted down by members of the Conservative government and failed to pass second reading. The government has a second opportunity today to support this bill and correct their mistake. But before I go any further, I want to take a step back and remind the House how it all began. In November, 20, in November 2019, just months before the pandemic began, I stood in this house with my newborn in my arms and spoke about maternal mental health. Speaker, my statement went viral. It received over 4 million views and almost 60,000 shares on Facebook alone. On TikTok, it was almost at half a million views, over a million on Instagram, etc. The reason I share this is to say that this issue resonated with people, with mothers in particular. I've also received countless messages from moms and moms-to-be who shared their experiences of postpartum depression, anxiety, and other mental health disorders. Many mothers suffer in silence without access to mental health care or the social supports they need. The fear of being labeled as an incapable parent of falling short because, the, because of the unrealistic expectations for mothers and women often prevent us from seeking help. Sadly, our society leaves new mothers struggling in isolation with the assumption that it is all natural to manage on their own. When some mothers do seek help, it is difficult to navigate the system to get the right supports. And frankly, what they do find is lacking. Despite the high prevalence of maternal mental health disorders and their serious and lasting impacts on mothers, maternal mental health is overlooked as an issue. It is an issue that impacts parents of every culture, age, income level, race, gender, and ability. However, I'm using the term maternal mental health disorders because mothers are overwhelmingly the largest group affected. Maternal mental health issues are not uncommon. Up to one in five mothers in Ontario experience some type of maternal mental health disorder. These disorders include postpartum depression, anxiety, postpartum stress disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, bipolar disorder, and psychosis. The difficulties posed by these disorders cannot be overstated. If left untreated, they can lead to devastating outcomes such as prolonged parental depression, partner conflict, weakened attachment between mother and child, and increased risk of impaired child development. Maternal mental health disorders also increase the risk of obstetric and neonatal complications and can affect the entire family. In rare cases, these disorders can even lead to maternal suicide and infanticide. Sadly, Flora Babakani from Toronto was a mother who died by suicide last year. Flora's lifelong dream was to be a mother. At 44 years old, after years of fertility treatments, Flora finally became pregnant. Her sister Mimi shares that Flora was very anxious throughout her pregnancy and would often call her concerned about the health of her baby. Flora was deemed high risk due to diabetes and will call the hospital weekly for ultrasounds to ensure that everything was okay. Mimi wishes Flora had received help for her anxiety during her pregnancy. Flora couldn't believe it when she gave birth to a healthy baby girl, Amber. She was on cloud nine and very happy. When Flora didn't return Mimi's calls, Mimi thought Flora was busy being a new mom, but later learned that Flora was suffering from severe edema and needed to stay at the hospital for treatment. Mimi thought Flora was upset due to the physical struggle she was experiencing and hoped that Flora would feel better emotionally once her edema was under control. Looking back on it now, however, a lot of it was probably due to her mental health. 
Flora was never diagnosed or given medication, and the pandemic only exacerbated her isolation. Flora's family tried to get her help, and she was so close to receiving it. However, it was too late. The day after Flora's family got her to speak with the doctor, she tragically died by suicide. Just two months and 10 days after giving birth to Ember. In Flora's memory, an annual Flora's Walk was launched last year. This year, the walk will be taking place on May 3rd, Maternal Mental Health Day. There are already over 40 walks planned across the country, including several in Ontario. Speaker, despite the devastating health impacts of mental health disorders and their high prevalence, the vast majority of women are left to manage these issues alone. Up to 85% of mothers who experience maternal mental health disorders do not receive any treatment. Let's sit with that figure for a moment. As many as 85% of mothers who need help don't get it. According to a study from the Canadian Perinatal Mental Health Collaborative, 95% of healthcare practitioners believe that maternal mental health services are insufficient in Canada. An alarming 87% of healthcare practitioners do not have mandated screening for maternal mental health disorders in their workplace, even though we know that one in five mothers will develop these issues at some point. And when mothers are screened, their symptoms identified, they often have to wait for months to access treatment. These figures demonstrate that maternal mental health care in Ontario urgently needs attention. However, these figures alone do not tell the whole story. I have heard from thousands of mothers over the last few years, and I want to share some of their experiences with you all. Mothers have shared how unsupported they feel in their struggles. One mother said, I can still remember so clearly the struggles I had and the inadequacy I felt as a mom. The difference we could make by supporting one another is enormous. Another mother said, I'll never forget my daughter's first six months. I thought I wouldn't make it. It was dark. And I realized later that I should have talked to my family and loved ones. I needed to ask for help. Some mothers described the constant terror they felt. One wrote, I'm in fear even when my baby is sleeping. I'm in fear to be at home with him on my own. These fears are ignored completely by people around me. Another mom said, most days feel impossible to get through. Most days I just want to stay asleep. It's lonely, but I have a newborn and a toddler to care for. It's so hard, and the sadness is all-consuming. The anxiety makes me feel like I'm constantly drowning and gasping for air. One wrote, I tried to be everything for everyone else, and I almost forgot who I was before. Even though I love my child more than life itself, when I looked in the mirror, I didn't recognize myself. Speaker, these stories are heartbreaking. We owe it to mothers everywhere to listen and take action. We owe it to all of our own mothers. The year after the birth of a child can be one of the most challenging times in a mother's life. She's trying to heal mentally and physically from the experience of childbirth, all while dealing with sleepless nights and the constant care needs of a newborn. Mothers also take on the emotional labor of families, remembering birthdays, appointments, school events, often caring for aging parents and relatives. Mothers do their best to handle the crushing weight of these responsibilities every day. But sometimes the weight is just too heavy. They need and deserve help from their family, from their community, healthcare providers, and from their government to make it through. Speaker. As I stated at the start, during the last session, the government voted down Bill 176, which proposed two important measures. First, to proclaim the first Wednesday of May of each year as Maternal Mental Health Day to raise awareness on this issue and address the stigma around it. Second, to bring forward concrete solutions to improve maternal mental health, which included a comprehensive review of maternal mental health in Ontario, and to prepare a provincial framework and action plan on the issue. Unfortunately, the government did not support the second measure. So, let's try again. 
one step at a time. I am urging the government to take a small step and proclaim the first Wednesday of May of each year as Maternal Mental Health Day to raise awareness on this issue. This will also demonstrate the government's acknowledgement of the importance of maternal mental health, a matter that is overlooked and requiring action. By taking this first but important step, we leave the door open for more meaningful action on this issue in the future. Speaker, mothers have one of the most rewarding jobs in the world, but it is also one of the toughest. Unfortunately, we tend to forget this, especially when a child is first born. And we assume that mothers should be happy all the time. It takes a village to raise a child, and this village includes not only our partners, family, and friends, but also our healthcare system. We all belong to this village, and so we must work together to raise the children of our village, and maternal mental health is a crucial component of that effort. Maternal mental health is not a luxury. We cannot afford to leave mothers behind. Struggling with mental health during or after a pregnancy is a common experience, not a weakness. By passing the Maternal Mental Health Act, we can take the step towards creating a province that values the well-being of mothers and their families. Thank you.